Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Still unsolved, day 19. Um, so hoping for a better day 20, or 21, whatever today is. Oh, crap.
This is really dumb. But it's foolproof. <laughs> oh dear. So basically each one of these is non-deterministic. Wow. So there's only 10 locations.
So on a given roll, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's three, ten, it's nine options. So three, we can get four. There's five ways to get six, six, seven ways to get six, six ways to get seven. Okay, that looks good. So now, for each of those, then we just multiply.
Holy crap. Yes! Yes! Nice. That was a really nice memorization problem. I really, really like that. I mean, I did well at it, so that always helps, doesn't it? Um, okay, so let's just clean this up. One forty four. Okay, this is the correct direction. Now I'm feeling better. Now I'm feeling a lot better. <laughs> it was kind of stupid because I missed it. This is twenty one instead of twelve. I just did a little bit of listexia, I mean dyslexia there. <laughs> okay. And that was my answer for part one. Okay, well, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling way better now. I've, I spent quite a bit of time today thinking about the day 19 before the stream, and it, it wasn't going well. I wasn't really figuring it out yet. So I was a bit slow on the parsing. I think that was fine. This part, I went with as stupid of a, a algorithm as possible, just so that I wouldn't screw it up. Um, so we're keeping track of the number of rolls and the dice of current value. I'm, I wonder if this is actually correct. I mean, it works, but like, uh... huh? Oh, because it's, it, it, I think it works because of the, the, the modulo, honestly. Huh, that's weird. I, I don't know how that exactly works.
three. Okay, so equals Okay, so that's the more sane way of doing it. And here we can do the same trick. Right. That has to be declared before, obviously. So we just flip using flip between players with that, which is pretty nice. I think it's like technically like I could do do this a little bit more concisely with like uh, switching the index back and forth but uh, I think I'm gonna go with this this is not actually too bad um, and then this is really where things got kind of more creative so first of all I I calculated the frequency of each different role let's see if anybody else has solved Colin and Kelly have solved Okay, unfortunate. So this one like doesn't really is is not exact. It's just like a um, a recursion problem, really. Ah, three again. A three one day. That's not too bad though. Yeah, so like since a hundred is a multiple Okay, so basically what this keeps track of is the roll frequencies. Um, which basically tells me at a given position, um, or like basically tells me what the frequency of each total roll value is going to be. So each dice can be one to three. I should use I range here.
Um, and then this roll frequencies are bit, are going to tell me how much I need to multiply by. So this wins function basically takes in the current player locations, current player scores, and then whose turn it is. If Actually, so we can we can simplify this a bit more. So basically, the base cases are if P1 score, P2 score goes above or equal to 21. In that case, then we return a win for them. And then down here, I'm going to go ahead and RF Um oh uh let's see here Let's use the better spot calculation. Oh, something blew up. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. The, the, of course that doesn't work. There's a plus equals. Wow, I'm bad at this. So we go through like basically each of the different frequencies. So you know if it's one, two, three, if X is at one and, it's, and it's, if player one is at one and it's their turn, they have one dice roll that will get them to three. There's like a few that'll get them to four, even more that'll get them to five. So we just determine how many wins they would have once they move there. Um, so this allows us to simultaneously go to all of those different locations. And then we just compute from there. We only have to compute them one time. Because the branching factor is going to end up being kind of the same. Like It's going to end up being very, very similar. Or we're going to end up with a lot of the same branches. Let's actually do... Oh, apparently the cache doesn't matter. Oh. The cache definitely matters. There we go. There we go. Oh, and the the nice thing is it looks like Uh, the, the test actually um, seeds the cache. So there's a lot of pre-computation that actually happens. Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, we go through each of their frequencies. This is the key. That's the, the, so the key is is like how many? No, wait. This is the this is the value of the roll. This one is the roll frequency. Um, let me pull this down here. Avoid branching. Again, we compute this the new spot for the player two and then add that to their score and then just send that to the recursive call. Okay, yeah, um, pretty nice problem. I, I kind of like that. That was pretty good. I like the, the recursion thing here. Um, so yeah, each, each one of the different roles the, so the new location that we go to, we, we compute how many wins we'd get at that new location, multiply that by how many times we would roll that, and then, then that's the answer. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching. Um, don't know if we'll get back to streaming this year, um, but maybe next year. So have a good rest of your evening.